So my new friend Brian Yale, who's the bass player for Matchbox 20, said he had a very rare Rickenbacker 4003 8-string bass that was in serious trouble. The tension on the strings from that slender long scale neck had curved the neck bad enough that the fretboard was delaminating and the neck was separating from the body. He said that he had a couple other guitar guys look at it and they didn't want to touch it. I said, bring it in, we'll talk about it and see if we can get her going. The guitar had a couple of issues. The original single action truss rods were insufficient for the stress. And the oversized, deeply routed pickup cavity was acting like a hinge. We decided we would install new dual action truss rods and make the fretboard repair. And that I would create a block for reinforcement of the pickup cavity. So first I applied heat and removed the fretboard and the truss rods. The channels were deep enough, but I had to widen them each by a sixteenth of an inch. I also had to make a little more room up in the headstock. Next, I scraped the lacquer from the fretboard. I installed the rods, glued and repositioned the fretboard and clamped it. Next, I removed all the lacquer from the pickup cavity. I discovered someone else had tried to repair the cracks by installing some small dowel pins. This was insufficient. I drilled some small holes along the body by the neck. This would facilitate the penetration of some CA glue. I then created a block that fits snugly in the pickup cavity with the most minimum clearance for the pickup. There's a second smaller cavity below that I created another block for. Then glued and clamped them both in place. With the repairs complete, I went on to fix the finish. I scraped and sanded the seams flush. I feathered in the color on the fretboard seams and where the body meets the neck. I then sprayed all the repairs with 16 coats of tobacco colored lacquer to match the original. I scraped the lacquer from the frets. I scraped and sanded all the seams flush then wet sanded everything smooth. I buffed all the repairs and polished the entire guitar. I reassembled the guitar and went on to the setup. I restrung the guitar and brought it up to tension. I adjusted the new truss rods and found that I was able to go past flat. I brought it back and gave it the smallest amount of relief. We decided to modify the original four saddle bridge. I found the intonation for each string and created a template. I filed the bridge almost flat, then ground in separate intonation points for each string. I finished the setup with a pretty fast action. Thanks Brian for a challenging fun project.